Welcome to the episode 17 of Sugidama Podcast, the podcast about Japanese sake, the drink which, like many of us, has relatives and friends. And we are going to talk about some of them with Kinu Yukawa, a Japanese food specialist based in London, and who is known under his scrumptious moniker Deliciously Japanese on Instagram and web space. But before I introduce our guest, let me tell you about our sponsor, London Sake. Who have one of the widest selection of premium and craft sake available online today. You can choose from over 100 sake from 25 breweries and they will deliver across the UK and many European markets. And if you don't know what sake to choose, you can use simple online tasting notes together with very sensible and affordable food pairings to help you decide. What's more, you can get 10% discount by just using the code SUGIDAMA, all caps, during checkout. London Sake, making Sake simple. My name is Alex, and I live in London. I'm a certified Sake specialist, Sake judge, and Sake educator and advocate. Besides this podcast, I have SUGIDAMA blog, where I write about Sake, publish tasting notes and overviews, and information about sake events happening in London. So today we are taking a break from the sake ingredients series and we'll talk about sake in Japanese cuisine with Kinu Yukawa, who is a Japanese chef and cookery teacher from Kobe, Japan, currently based in London. She ventured into the world of food early in life and fostered the basics of cooking from her grandmother. Later, she trained French cuisine at Ecole Ritz Escoffier in Paris and traditional Japanese cuisine in Kyoto. Before I play the interview, I have to apologize for some substandard sound quality, which is entirely my fault. I hope it won't spoil the impression of a very interesting conversation I have with Kino. So, here we go. Please welcome our guest. Hello, Kino, how are you? Hello, thank you for having me tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm delighted to have you. We discussed it uh, in, back in November, I think. Yes, yes, that's <laughs> right. Experience. Yeah, and uh, something was um, coming up and um, yeah, and finally. <laughs> yes, finally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how have you been? Very, very good. Thank you. And yourself? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm, it's, um, it's getting warmer and nice and uh, days getting longer. So yeah, it's... <laughs> It's spring. So yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Finally, first um, spring is here. So let's let's start. Let's start. And probably, if you could tell our listeners about yourself, what you do, and what is your connection with sake. I am a washoku educator and promoter. I teach Japanese cooking to Japanese food lovers in Europe. Develop recipes for restaurants and food manufacturers. And I also do food related consultancies such as food package design and food photography. Wow. Yeah, because I, I saw your website and it's, it looks beautiful. It's, it's um, oh, thank you. such a lovely photos and such a, you know, delicious things <laughs> on them. So you just, you, you, your mouth start watering straight away. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it very much. <laughs> and so I quite like the name, uh, Deliciously Japanese. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I do anything related to Japanese food. Mm, okay. Basically. So um, with sake, do you have any kind of connection with sake? Or, because I know that you did uh, some sake events uh, back in um, a few years ago when you were uh, with um, Japan Center, I think. Yes, I've been um, promoting sake um, at Japan Center. We did a lot of events. Um, you mm -hmm. came to um, many sake journeys, I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, we've been doing a lot of events, um, but unfortunately, um, from COVID, um, we're not allowed to do events anymore. But um, we did a few um, series 
of sake um, Zoom lectures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we yeah, yeah I've been to uh, one. Yeah, I've been to yes. one with the Gekekan. Yeah, yes, Gekekan, that's right. Yeah, it was yes. very interesting, yeah. So we did a series and yeah, we're still planning um, different things, but we can mm -hmm. do um, virtually and also um, in person um, from after lockdown, post okay. lockdown. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> definitely, it's Very definitely. Much so too. Yeah, every I think everybody I, I was talking to well, from the you know the second network, everybody's saying, "Oh yeah, yes. I, I miss this event. I, I'm looking forward to mm -hmm. to them to 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 start again." So yeah, it's yes. um, um, can't wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I ask everybody on, on these interviews what was your first experience with sake or um, the moment when you decided, yeah, I like it or not? Um, yes, I would say um, in Japan, it was more sort of like my image of sake was um, an old man's drink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I think that's quite um, a general kind of image that we had when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it was um, about, um, it was only about 30 years ago, maybe perhaps that the, uh, the new style of sake, the categorization mm -hmm. developed. It was more kind of like um, first class, second class sake. Mm -hmm. It was very general before, yeah. prior to that. So that I think this elegant type of sake is um, quite a new thing. Mm -hmm. And then I was only introduced to this um, abroad. All right. So mm -hmm. I'm here mm -hmm. in, in London. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my experience is um, just like others. Yeah. <laughs> At the beginning, it was quite harsh, you know, mm -hmm. the, um, the sake I, I had. Mm -hmm. And then um, later on, through my job, I met um, many sake breweries and then also got a lot of training from the Japanese government mm -hmm, mm -hmm. about sake and then realized that all these um, different um, grades of sake mm -hmm. and also the artisan way of making sake mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, was introduced to me and then I tasted it and it was kind of like, you know, eye opening. Wow, it's like so different. Yeah, because I, I met quite a lot of people from Japan who never tried sake before or tried it in London rather than back in Japan, which is um, it's not the image people usually have from all these kind of movies and um, especially samurai movies or, you know, like um, James Bond movies when um, people constantly drink sake in Tokyo, which they don't. <laughs> So I think um, the uh, topic of this uh, conversation, this interview, it's um, about the role of sake in Japanese cooking. Because if you look at the major ingredients of Japanese cuisine and every re recipe, you've got like sake, soy sauce, mirin. Uh, I think three of them, it's, it's the, almost in all uh, recipes. And, Plus, you've got like obviously dasha stock, you've got miso and um, other things. But uh, I think sake, mirin, and soy sauce is um, soy sauce is um, everywhere. If you if you can talk about uh, the role of sake in in Japanese cooking first. Okay. So um, basically, in Japanese cooking, um, mm -hmm. we would always first and foremost we always have sake. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, sake, what sake does is um, it tenderizes uh, meat uh, and proteins, mm -hmm. fish. It takes away unwanted smells, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it also adds umami. All right. So okay. th these are the three main things that sake does to cooking. Mm. So that's why we always use um, sake in Japanese cooking. Interesting thing about umami is that obviously it's very Japanese concept. I mean, it's the like a fifth taste or something. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And I was listening to podcasts quite recently and um, the guy, I think it was, I don't remember which one, and the guy was um, teaching uh, sake. He was a sake educator. And mm -hmm. he said, uh, I asked my you know, students, what is umami? 
and somebody said, oh, is it that the taste you, you, you feel but can't explain or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Um, so sake is obviously quite rich in umami and um, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's quite important, I guess, to, to, to just to boost umami and Japanese food, which pretty much umami um, rich itself. So, yes. um, but um, so uh, is it, was sake always the part of Japanese cuisine or is it a more recent development or it's like, uh, because I know a lot of things started either in Edo period or in during major restoration. So I was wondering uh, about sake, is it, uh, there is any kind of uh, time when sake became part of the cuisine? Yes, um, it was more or less um, brought into Japanese cooking in the Edo period, as you mentioned. Mm. So in mid-Edo period, that's when a lot of um, soba restaurants um, and um, grilled eel, kabayaki mm -hmm. restaurants, that's mm -hmm. when it opened. And then they needed that, um, the sweetness in mm -hmm. the flavor. And then in the Edo period, um, sugar was a very premium, expensive product. So um, for the commoners, um, sugar wasn't available. So mm -hmm. the only way to extract it was really by sake. Mm -hmm. And in this case, sort of more like mirin. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they used mirin to um, bring the sweetness in the Japanese cooking. Okay, okay. So it's, uh, it's basically started as a lot of things in Japan during other period. And, uh... Yes, that's when all this kind of food um, culture developed and a lot of gourmet cooking. I remember you mentioned um, the sauce. Um, it was some of the, I think it was uh, some Insta, Insta Live, and you, you're doing like a sauce, you said it's used in, in cooking or before soy sauce, and it was based on sake. Mm -hmm. Okay, this sauce is called Iri Sake, and it's made by um, simmering sake with umeboshi, which is the plum pickle, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, adding a bit of katsuobushi, bonito flakes, mm. and then um, straining it, that's it. So it's, very, um, it's a very light sauce. So it was used um, more or less like soy sauce yeah. in um, Muromachi period to Edo period. Mm. So, so these... that was the Japanese. Okay, so the soy sauce came later. Yes, soy sauce came late. So, yeah, soy sauce was available, but it was also very expensive. I see, I see. So it wasn't available for the commoners. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it was until um, soy sauce was massively produced in mid-Edo period okay. when, when, there was, um, when they developed a way to mass produce it. And okay. then, then it was cost-effective. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. it was available to the commoners. Then the um, people of Edo actually preferred um, soy sauce to irisake mm -hmm. because it had more of a punch and All it right. has more of a taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's how kind of um, soy sauce took place of irisake. Okay, okay. You mentioned that um, sake adds umami it tenderizes uh, the meat and uh, removes some unwanted smells. Are there any um, difference? Because when you, you go to like Japanese supermarket, you can see mm -hmm. bottles of cooking sake mm -hmm. and, um, and bottles of like normal sake. Is there a difference between cooking sake and just normal sake? So um, I think cooking sake um, is more, it's basic sake, just like cooking wine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, just love um, people who, who cook, who yeah. a lot of chefs um, mm -hmm. say, don't use cooking wine, just use normal wine. Okay. okay. My recommendation is just use um, normal sake. Okay, okay. So mm -hmm. I think it um, brings out, um, better flavor mm -hmm. and so I would buy the most um, economical sake not cooking sake but most mm -hmm. economical sake on the shelf okay. and then use it at 
for cooking, or if you have any sake left, um, you can just use that for cooking. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it is quite interesting that you probably better off uh, using the uh, just normal sake and um, uh, go go with it. I think it's not preference, but um, a lot of chefs, um, Western chefs, they will mm. say uh, you don't want to put anything in your food that you can't drink. Okay. So um, yeah, yeah, that's why they prefer thing. normal wine to cooking wine. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if that's um, hundred percent the case for sake. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is better, but I just kind of feel that it's quite nice to put okay. um, drinkable sake mm, <laughs> in my cooking. Yeah. So that's what I do. Okay. But okay. Um, the amount you put is very um, it's very scarce. So mm -hmm. maybe perhaps it doesn't really matter if you use mm. cooking sake. Okay, I see. Okay. So with um, mirin, which is uh, also like a um, sweet um, alcoholic, um, I don't know, sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is mirin? Yes. So uh, mirin is um, a product made from koji, mm -hmm. um, steamed glutinous rice, so which is mochi gomme. I see. Okay. And then adding um, distilled rice liquor, which is shochu. Mm -hmm. So that's combined together. Mm -hmm. And then it can be um, matured for a few months, up to a few years. Obviously, oh. the longer you mature it, it gets darker and darker. Mm -hmm. And um, also the flavors, um, the umami flavors would multiply. So mm -hmm. it's, it just gets richer and richer. Mm -hmm. This drink, um, were actually um, drunk in the Edo period um, as a lady's sake. Really? So, oh. yes. Hmm. Interesting. So, yeah. until um, the mid Edo period, people were actually drinking um, a mirin. Mm -hmm. Is it strong or is it it's light? Uh, do you know what it's kind of in terms of um, percentage of alcohol? Okay, means, um, so in the stores, uh, usually about um, fourteen to fifteen percent alcohol. So it's it's pretty much like sake in terms of uh, strength. Yes, pretty much like. Sake. Okay. So what is it? Because sometimes you you see that it says mirin. Sometimes it says hon mirin. So the difference between the real mirin and um, the other um, non mirin mirin flavored um, ingredient seasoning. Mm -hmm. is that um, mirin is, home mirin is um, brewed and fermented um, accordingly, just like sake. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the mirin um, flavored uh, seasoning is sweet by adding glucose syrup. I see. So it's not the natural sweetness mm. from the koji. Okay. So it's just made like um, mixing alcohol with, uh, you know, sugar syrup, basically. Because. It's actually a low, low in alcohol percentage. Mm. Um, some of it doesn't really have alcohol percentage. Okay. So mm. that's also um, to do with um, the alcohol tax. Mm -hmm. The reason mm -hmm. why the, um, the mirin flavored um, seasoning is cheaper is because it's not taxed. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, um, you don't have to pay the alcohol tax. Okay. Okay. So the ones that actually come into this country as well, because of mirin with the alcohol percentage, you have, you know, it's added on the alcohol tax. So, but uh, it's better to use probably natural, real mirin, right, for cooking. Oh, yes, yes, definitely. It brings out um, the real natural umami and the sweetness mm -hmm. without harsh sweetness from glucose. So, um, yeah, I would hi highly recommend the real home mirin. Mm -hmm. Because home mirin is usually more expensive because of this tax and probably because you have to brew it for yes. some time. Yeah. I've never thought that mirin could be such an interesting topic. But before hearing even more about this cousin of Japanese sake, let me remind you about London Sake, our sponsor, and their huge selection of curated sake sets which provide a great opportunity to explore various styles and types of sake. Have a look, but don't forget about the magic word SUGIDAMA, all caps, to get your 10% discount.
Back to Mirren. So Mirren is said to be brought to Japan from China、um, in the Qing Dynasty,、hmm. and、um, from in the Sengoku period, which is、um, 1467 to 1650, Mirren was appointed as a sweet sake, and the word Mirren. Um, me、um, is sweet, like honey. <laughs> Ding is a dripping. So、um, the word comes from it's it's a sweet drink. It tastes like a dripping honey. All right. Okay. I I, I never know、uh, known about that. Yeah. Yes, that's where it、uh, comes from. Because it's usually written in in hiragana, right? There is a kanji for it as mm, well. Mm. Yes, there are different ways to write it, but one way is that、um, it's as sweet as honey drink.、Mm-hmm. So、um, the true、um, story is still unknown,、okay. but it's said to be that it comes from、um, China.、Mm-hmm. Okay, and in terms of brands, because here you've got、mm-hmm. like a probably a couple of brands. Is it in Japan? You've got probably much more brands of Mirin. Is there? Very sort of big brand, Mirin brand in Japan, or which is like household name.、Um, so in Japan, there are sake breweries that make Mirin,、okay. and also、um, Mirin makers、um, that actually only produce Mirin. So they are just like miso or soy sauce makers.、Mm. So they just make Mirin, <laughs> and、um, the most famous one is in Aichi Prefecture、mm-hmm. called. Mikawa Mirin,、okay. and that is、um, one of the top artisan Mirin、mm-hmm. of Japan. <laughs> okay, so like with soy sauce, you've got artisan produced Mirin, and you probably got like a more mass production of Mirin. Yes. Do you see the difference between different brands of Mirin, or in terms of like、um, taste, or I don't know? So、um, regarding the artisan Mirin. It's actually drinkable.、Mm-hmm. Um, it's very pal- palatable, so actually people would drink it on special occasions,、um, like in、um, Japanese New Year.、Okay. I'm sure you've seen the Japanese beautiful lunch boxes yeah, where yeah. they have the oseki ryori. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So、um, the drink that goes with it、um, at the beginning of the year is mirin.、Mm. So、um, we would soak.、Uh, Herbs into the mirin, so herbs are. It has a very cinnamony te-、um, flavor to this mm-hmm. herb, mm-hmm. and then that's <laughs> sort of dipped in the mirin. Yeah, and、um, that's co- the drink、um, to start the year. Okay. So、um, yes, so mirin is used、um, as like a very、uh, ceremonial drink. So that that type of mirin, I would say,、um, is from the artisan mirin makers.、Okay. Because I, I heard that um, this um, this New Year drink, but I thought it was sake with、uh, herbs. I didn't know that it's、uh, it's mirin. Yes,、um, it's traditionally mirin,、mm-hmm. but I think a lot of people, since、um, not many people can buy edible, okay,、uh, mirin, yeah, yeah, because it's not available everywhere. Yeah. So some people will replace that with sake.、Mm-hmm. But traditionally, it was mirin.、Okay. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. Yeah. So if you want to try this artisan type of mirin,、mm-hmm. um, I have a friend who actually makes mirin in Cambridge. Oh, okay. Her name is Kotomi,、mm. and her brand is called Mizunomichi. Mizunomichi. Okay. Mizunomichi, which I can send you her Instagram、yeah. later. Yes, so she makes all sorts of artisan fermented、um, food.、Mm-hmm. So she makes、uh, koji, of course, and she makes miso soy sauce, mirin,、mm-hmm. um, vinegars, everything from scratch, and everything from the very traditional Japanese method.、Mm. So maybe you, you like to try、um, artisan mirin.、Mm-hmm. You can、uh, try kotomi's、okay, mirin. Okay, yeah, I'll probably look look into it. Yeah. <laughs> And、um, yeah, because I'm quite interested in, in all those、um, fermented things, and、um, yeah, interesting. I didn't know that、uh, some somebody makes a、uh, uh, mirin here because I I know I, I know that、uh, obviously Kampai they 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 make mirin, and I know 
some people who make tofu and uh, miso, but I um, never heard about uh, mirin. Oh, good. There's been a, a quite a big um, fad of fermenting food um, after post COVID. Mm -hmm. So uh, people um, during lockdown, they've yeah. been making sourdough, making koji, miso. Um, it's quite big now. Yeah, yeah. People are fermenting yeah. kimchi, sauerkraut. Mm. But next time I see you, I'll bring the artisan mirror in. Oh, yeah. So you can try it. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely do that. Itadakimasu. One thing that quite popular and one thing that sometimes baffles people is mm -hmm. um, how to choose sake and food. Because one misconception I would say is that if you want to have sake, you have to have Japanese food only. Another thing is that people don't really know what kind of food is good with sake. Can we talk about it a bit? Okay. I don't know yeah. if I'm the best person to ask about this because yeah, you mean, have a lot of second yeah but uh, you know a lot about food i guess so let's say you you know that it's going to be like a sake tasting or sake party and um, you are in charge uh, of food so what kind of food you would prepare for for this okay so in general the um, ginjo sake is um, more um, paired with lighter um, food, which is like um, carpaccio, um, salads, anything um, light, not so greasy, and um, the mm. junmai and the honjozo is something a bit more robust, um, something meaty, and something saucy. But my suggestion is really just um, just go with anything, really, because I understand when um, after doing a lot of um, food, and sake mm. events, mm -hmm. yes. I understand that everybody's palate is very different. And then although we suggested, as I mentioned earlier, with um, how categorized and this goes that, and then when I ask for people's opinion, everybody gives me different answers and they're all very unique. So I kind of feel that um, people should just try the sake and pair it with what they like. Because sometimes, it can be a bit, a bit difficult where you think, okay, there's a rule with this goes with this and I should do with this with this sake. And then it can be a bit uptight. So I think um, whatever they feel like, you know, if, if, if they think um, having something like umeshu or yuzushu, which a lot of people like throughout the dinner, that's fine. If they think they want something a bit more um, robust, like um, junmai, and then a lot of people like dry sake. So whether they have it with something light, they think, oh, I rather um, prefer that dry sake because I think the ginjo sake is too delicate. And I think that's all right as well. So yes, I think it's just up to the person's palate and there's, there shouldn't really be any rules. Mm. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Because sometimes people, yeah, too fixated on... Uh, how it's done properly rather than trying to experiment with um, food and sake and um, see for themselves what they like and what they don't like and um, what goes better for them. Yes. And um, and as you know, uh, like sake is very different depending on who you drink it with. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It does, and also the sake vessel. So um, it's very interesting drinking it from a matsu or drinking it with a ochoko mm -hmm. or the types of ochoko, whether it's a glass or whether it's um, that metal, mm. um, the taste will um, vary and also the temperature. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And that's why I think sort of like, um, I, th I think everyone should just play around with it. Yeah. And how they fancy. Mm. Yeah, it's true. And um, people very often uh, forget that it's, you, it's not the cuisine which is important. It's the actual dish, which is mm. important for, for pairing. It's a, if you like, I don't know, if you like steak, you can pair it with um, robust and, as you said, 
very sort of umami rich sake and if you like um, mm -hmm. some kind of light fish dish you probably would like to have it with um, uh, light and delicate uh, dry sake something like that but do you know any kind of um, small dishes which would easy to prepare and uh, which would go well with sake because I know like uh, for me um, if I need something to eat with sake for example I do like a tasting or I decided to have a drink over over zoom or over skype with friend uh, my friends I mean cheese is obviously the easiest option because cheese goes very well with sake but um, are there any kind of other mm -hmm. easy options which you would recommend which probably require slightly more effort rather than just cut the cheese but uh, still easy to, mm -hmm. to do mm. easy to do i just as you said cheese is great I yeah, think yeah. That cheese goes so well with sake that's what i usually have yeah it's lazy and then sometimes yeah. i think that the less um you have just like um, Satomi mentioned that she eats it with wasabi or salt. All right, yeah, yeah. You know, you know she, she talked about it in, yeah. the, in her interview. Yeah. But less is actually more. Mm, yeah. <laughs> That's how I feel. You really want to focus on the sake, mm. um, maybe a bit of marmite on the cracker or, All as right. you said, mm -hmm. a bit of cheese. Is actually You can actually enjoy the sake more. The focus is actually yeah. on the sake. But um, yeah, something like um, yeah, carpaccio. Mm. That's quite nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just um, a pour something slight, um, a light dressing or some salt, mm -hmm. some interesting salt, some sea salt mm -hmm. on the on the fish, mm -hmm. and then um, drink it with sake or something grilled. Grilled is very easy. Yeah, yeah. Something grilled, but. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, the, if you want to be focused on the sake, the less, the, yeah. the less otsumami, the less nibbles, yeah. I feel that I can actually really focus on the sake and really enjoy it. Yeah, but still, in if you having sake in Japan, very often they give mm -hmm. you some kind of very small nibbles like um, wasabi or yes. miso or some other very sort of small things which probably not available mm -hmm. here here it's yes. probably more like cheese and uh, probably some kind of um, sausage or some ham things like that that uh, like parma ham mm -hmm. or something that's probably easy to to get and uh, easy to to use <laughs> you just put it on the plate and here you are yeah yeah i mean sake usually is uh, okay drunk with food Generally, I mean, mm -hmm. generally Japanese people drink something and eat something. It's it's, it's quite a, mm -hmm. uh, unusual thing for probably a lot of um, people in in England who drink mm -hmm. or eat or something like that. But um, um, with sake, it's you don't probably want to have some kind of heavy meal. Um, with your sake if you want to enjoy just sake but you want something some kind of nibbles anyway and uh, some kind of things that probably uh, highlight the sake taste or something yeah I would recommend um, things from the deli section mm. so we have um, the olives mm -hmm. the sun-dried tomatoes um, tapas you know this little Tapas um, sort of things yeah. from the supermarket deli. Mm -hmm. They're very nice because then that kind of um, supplements the Japanese izakaya feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. So we kind of like to nibble here and there. So we like, usually like to have a lot of dishes and then we would kind of try the sake. And also we like to try different types of sake at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like nibble, drink, nibble, drink and talk, okay. laugh. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of the, each episode, I ask people to introduce some, recommend some sake they like, they would like other people to know. Would you like to recommend something? 
Okay, so my recommendation is um, Kasumitsuru. Mm -hmm. so I've got this one. Okay. I know you drink Kasumitsuru as well. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So um, this is from the same prefecture that I was raised. All right. Um, I'm from Kobe. Okay. And um, that's Hyogo Prefecture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Kasumitsuru is also from Hyogo Prefecture. Okay. So my recommendation is Kasumitsuru. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. they are famous for their Kimoto style technique. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just love their sake. So what do you like the most in, in, uh, in this sake? Sorry, I have to mind my cat. Oh, yeah, <laughs> my don't cat worry. is meowing. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think cat will bother anyone. <laughs> is it... So he, he wanted to open the door, <laughs> so he was meowing. <laughs> so yeah. yes, so it's full body mm -hmm. because of the kimoto method and very robust and aromatic. Mm -hmm. um, it's got real the nice rice and dairy kind of notes which I like mm. because I, I just love rice. Okay, <laughs> so yeah. I kind of love, love the taste of it. So yeah, that's why I love this sake. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting because I had it, uh, probably I had it, somebody gave it to me just before the lockdown for my birthday. Ah, right. Yeah, it was um, just in 2019 or 2020, it's the beginning of 2020. Yeah, and, had, and somebody mm -hmm. gave it to me. Somebody who uh, never drank, drank sake before, but he, he knew that I like sake. So he bought it at Japan Center, I think. And uh, yeah, it, and, and I tried it. Uh, I tried it probably a few sometime after that. And uh, yeah, I quite, quite like it. Mm -hmm. I think I even mentioned it in, on my blog somewhere because I remember I was um, researching the brewery. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's definitely mm -hmm. was on, on, in my Instagram, definitely. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, this area is famous for their beef, mm. the tamba beef. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. very much like Kobe beef. Mm -hmm. And then also crab. All right. Crab. Oh, yeah, yes, because it's, 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 it's near the, the, the sea as well, right? Sea of Japan. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's by the Sea of Japan. Mm -hmm. And usually um, the sake brewers, they will brew the sake that matches their um, lo local cuisine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this um, kasumitsu, um, it matches both um, robust meat mm -hmm. and light okay. fish. Yeah, so it's quite well, versatile. Yeah, It's very versatile and obviously vegetables as well. Okay, yeah. yeah. So um, yes, it's a very versatile one. And also it's kind of nice to kind of, um, flavor on its own so we just kind of drink it yeah. on its own and that's really nice as well it's very flavorsome mm. do you drink it um chilled room temperature uh warmed or any yeah that as well it's you can have it chilled and obviously warm mm -hmm. as well because it, the, um the warmer it is um it brings out the nice aroma mm -hmm. so it, yeah it's very versatile in terms of cuisine and also the temperature mm. yeah it's a great recommendation it's yeah thank you yeah it's uh, i think the least our listeners will be delighted to try it and um, compare it to different temperature with different food yeah it, it's very good sake yeah i agree yes it's very good sake they are next to kinosaki onsen mm. i don't know if you heard of kinosaki onsen it's just a few stops before kasumi kasumi mm -hmm. is the station mm -hmm. where kasumi through is and then there's an onsen village, a very famous one called Chinosaki Onsen, mm. which is a few stops um, next to Kasumi. And we can, you can also visit them. They always welcome visitors. The brewery. Yes, the brewery. Yeah. Yes. So you can hop by Chinosaki Onsen, have a day, yeah. and go to Kasumi, Kasumitsuru, and visit their brewery as well. Yeah. Great. Yeah. It's, it's a very good day if you probably stay in an onsen overnight you can do both and uh, enjoy sake onsen you know and uh, mm. area around lovely combo <laughs> yeah yeah true so okay yeah very nice to talk to you 
Um, hope to see you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thanks a lot for uh, coming uh, on the podcast. If people want to know more about you, about uh, what you do, where can they find find you? Oh, on my website, Mm -hmm. um, www.deliciouslyjapanese.com. Okay. And that's my website. Okay. And I'll be there. Any any, um, queries, you can just write to me. Okay, cool. Cool. And you're on Instagram, definitely, because it's also called Deliciously Japanese on Instagram, right? That's right. Yeah, on yeah. Instagram as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll see you around. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Hope to see you soon. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. definitely. It's, um... Yeah, it was a very good conversation. I found out a lot of new things about sake and Japanese cuisine, and of course about mirin. That's it for today. I'll be back with more episodes. In the meantime, try your hand in sake and food pairing or cooking. But best of all, combine both. Make a nice Japanese dish which involves mirin and have it with equally nice sake. Follow Kino's or Satomi's advice on what sake to pick and share your experience. Any questions or suggestions? You can always drop me a line. My email address is alex at sugidama.co.uk or you can find me on Instagram at sugidama underscore blog or Twitter, sugidama blog in one word. Look at my website, sugidama.co.uk. I've got a constantly updated tasting notes section and a lot of posts with recommendations. The sake Kino recommended is available at London Sake website, and you can get a 10% discount uh, there by entering Sugidama, all caps, at the checkout. Or go to any other online sake store, or pop into a wine shop stocking sake or Japanese supermarket and pick up something nice. Again, if you like the episode and want more, hit the subscribe button. Please, 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 if you want to support Sugidama podcast, leave a review. Don't wait. Just do it now. It only takes a few minutes of your time, but means a really big deal for me. Again, share this podcast with your friends, with anyone who might ask you about Sakia, or on your social media, chat up, everywhere. Thanks a lot for listening. Kampai. Sugi, sugi, sugi. Sugi dama blog. Sugi, sugi, sugi. Sugi dama blog.